This is Twit. Well, I got one of these, Don, and, uh, you know, it's green. So Yeah, it's the wrong, it's the wrong color for your, uh, for your chroma key. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it really won't work. Here, we've got a, a tower on it. It's, it's like the invisible Dell we had earlier. You, you really can't see <laughs> Transparent. it. Transparent. Yeah. Anyway, let's, let's take a look at this and see what this thing is. Recently, Peter, my partner on Amateur Logic from Down Under, showed us a Fish 8840 component tester. It was a neat little device, does a lot of things. Well, Bruce, N1 EBQ, was the winner of the Chameleon MCOM antenna on the Smoke and Solder contest recently. He thought that Tommy and I should have a Fish 8840 of our own, so he sent us a couple. Let's just take a quick look at it. The tester has a ZIF socket to connect components. That's a zero insertion force. You put your components in there and then flip the lever, and that tightens down the clamps on it. And there's also some pads here for testing surface mount components. Let's just stick a resistor in here. You know, resistors are getting smaller, and like on these blue ones here, without a magnifying glass, it's a little difficult for me to determine what colors are on there. I could use an old meter to do that, or I can use this device. Now you'll notice that there's numbers 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 2, 3. There are three test points for each component you want to test here, and these are just doubled up. A 1 is the same here or here. A 2 is the same here or here, and there's several 3s on here. Well, if you want to test a component, you can just stick it in any two. The bottoms and the tops are the same. Just uh, for the resistor, we're going to put it on one and three. Three here on the bottom, and take a one from the top. Flip the lever over, and then push the test button. And it tells me this is 10.11k ohms. And that's correct, because this is a 10k ohm resistor. Now, you notice I take the resistor out, it's still reading. You have to reset this device between each test. That's one thing I'm not crazy about on it, but still a uh, neat little tester. Uh, let's do it again. I'm going to put it on a, one of the two holes here, and we'll stick it back up here on one again. And this is a 299.9 ohm resistor, and that's correct because the color code says it's a 300 ohm. You can test other components with it too, though. We can check capacitors. This one is a 2200 microfarad at 35 volts. Well, it won't tell us anything about the voltage. And one thing to keep in mind is the voltage is limited as to what it's going to test with. So some components that require a higher voltage are not really going to test right in it. It's taking a little longer to figure the capacitor out. 2352 microfarads and an ESR of 0.00 ohms. That's pretty good. What that is is the equivalent series resistance. You know, a capacitor is going to have some resistance on the leads and on the internal plates in there. And that's what this is a measure of. And the lower the ESR, the better. The V loss we see up there on the top, I believe, means voltage loss, and it's 0.9%. Now, here's another capacitor. I'm not even sure what this one is. Let's see if we can tell. I believe it's an 18 picofarad, so we'll stick it in here. Well, it can't read that capacitor, and I don't know what range of values this device will work with when testing components. I just couldn't find that information online. Now let's check it with an inductor. 0.92 millihenries, and the resistance in the wire of it is 0.3 ohms. And that is a 0.9 millihenry choke, so it's okay. And you can check transistors with this too, and I think that's primarily what it was designed for. Here's a little small signal transistor here, a silicon type. This device does not work good with germanium transistors. Let's just try this transistor and see if we can tell anything about it. And it's telling me it's an NPN. It's got a gain of 288. 
and the VF is 650 millivolts. Now you'll notice it's got numbers here. That's identifying the pins of the transistor. It's telling us that pin 1 is the emitter, pin 2 is the base, pin 3 is the collector. Or we could look right here, 1, 2, 3, EBC. Now you can check various other components with this. You can check uh, triax, uh, different type of solid state components, but a lot of these are not going to work right because this device just doesn't put out enough voltage to really get them in their operating range. You can check diodes with it as well. It'll check zeners, but only up to 5 volts since that's a voltage limit on it. But a nice little device. I was kind of curious what was in this thing. And at the heart of it right here is a Mega 328P microcontroller. You know, that's uh, very similar to the one used in the Arduino Uno. Then there's a few surface mount capacitors and resistors on here. What looks to be an 8 megahertz crystal. Uh, this is a 78L05. That's a 5-volt regulator. And some more resistors and capacitors. So this thing works mostly with the software that's on it and a few minimal components to run the microcontroller. There's several revisions of this device around. This one I've got has a, a fairly large battery drain even when the power is off. And if you look here, the positive of the battery is this lead right here. If we follow that on out, we see it goes to one side of a capacitor down to this resistor and then goes under that diode over here to R15. And R15 is connected down to R8. And then the other side of that goes to ground, which is the center terminal of the regulator here. So you've got these two 47K ohm resistors across the battery all the time, even when it's not on. So we can fix that problem. We can cut the trace that goes over here to the resistor and feed this instead with the input voltage to the regulator here, which will be after the power switch and will draw much less current. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife here and just carefully cut that trace. Now I've cut the trace completely through and I've measured it just to make sure that it did go through. And it is. So this point right here is isolated now. So I'm going to put a jumper wire from this side of the resistor down here to this hole that should have been C20, which was not used on this board. It also goes to the input of the regulator. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is tin that side of the resistor with some good old lead solder here so that I know it's going to stick pretty quick. Now let's make sure that our wire is firmly connected. And it is. And now we'll put the other side through that hole right there on top. And the insulation got a little hot, and it tried to jump back out of the way, but that's not going to matter because there's nothing that this wire is touching that it shouldn't be. I'll just clip that spare insulation off. Now let's put the unit back together and see if that battery tester circuit still works. Hmm, 5.1 volts. <laughs> I would say no. No, it's, say, an unknown or damaged component, not the unit here. So let's see what we got wrong. The voltage regulator is a 78L05, and I just assumed that pin 1 was the input to it. Well, that's wrong. Pin 3 here is actually the input. So what I'll need to do is just move my jumper wire from here over to this spot. And now here's our new jumper wire in the right position, from our uh, input side of R15 here on down to the positive pin on this missing capacitor, which should be the input to the regulator. The reason we need the input is because we want to measure the battery voltage going in because we know on the outside it's going to be 5 volts, and that's what we were seeing was 5.1 when we had it there. So let's try this out. Power on. 8.8 .8 volts, the same thing we were getting before. And now we're drawing much less current when the unit is not in use. It's only drawing about a microamp, so we don't have to disconnect the battery. 
I would be remiss in not telling you that you shouldn't go putting jumper wires on PC boards without knowing what you're doing. In this case, I knew that if I had it on the wrong side of the regulator, it wasn't going to hurt anything. So uh, no problems there. I just moved it over to where it should be to measure the correct voltage. But do be careful when you're modifying circuits. Well, there you go. If, if you're interested in one of those, do a search for FISH8840, and you'll come up with a number of places you can buy it. It's all over eBay, and they're not very expensive, less than 30 bucks. Uh, a handy little extra device to have on your bench there. I won't throw away my Simpson 260, but, you know, I'll use this every now and then, and it'll be pretty handy for checking some different uh, type of components.